Hi, my name is Christy Conlon. I'm an associate editor with Northlight Books Mixed Media Group, and I'm here today with author and artist Seth Apter, who recently released his book, The Pulse of Mixed Media. Seth has been in town with us this week working on a couple of DVDs, and we thought we would love to have the opportunity to sit down with Seth and talk a little bit and get to know him a little bit more. So Seth, welcome. <laughs> thanks, Christy. Glad thanks, to be here. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule. We are thrilled to have you with us currently. The first thing I wanted to ask you is if you could describe to me a little bit of what your art is all about. How would you describe yourself as an artist? Sure. I call myself a mixed media artist. I try to use a lot of non-traditional materials in my art. It's really usually paper-based, but I also use a lot of uh, wood panels and a lot of metal pieces as well. I like to take kind of non-traditional materials and put it all together to create something highly dimensional. In addition to the mixed media, I'm also a book artist, and I really enjoy creating uh, handmade books. Sometimes they're journals, sometimes they're just standard blank books, sometimes they're completed artist books. But I really enjoy that aspect to the art as well. And I understand that the story of how you got into making art is an interesting one. Can you share that with us? Well, it was unexpected for me, really. I, I was not interested at all uh, in art growing up or even in, in a lot of my adult years. And I was away on vacation and just happened to walk into a gallery in Vancouver, Canada. And I loved the art that I saw. I had never really seen anything like it at that point. This was back in 2000. And I spoke with the gallery owner. Turns out she was also the artist. And we hit it off and we spent a lot of time talking about art. She was telling me about her process. I bought a piece and I went home and thought that would be the end of it. But she mailed me a thank you and what she mailed me was this amazing piece of mail art that probably took her three or four minutes to create, but to me looked like a masterpiece. And I felt like I had to send her something in kind. So I created a piece of art, kind of my first piece, and I mailed it back to her. And over the course of time, we created this mail art relationship because she was so far away. I'm in New York, she was in Canada. And it grew from there. It just completely pulled me into the world of art. And how long ago was that? That was in 2000, so it's been about 12 years. So does that mean that you were one of those great untrained or self-trained artists that we all hear so much about? Well, I will definitely say that I'm self-trained. <laughs> um, I have taken some workshops over the last uh, five or six years, but, but mostly it's, it's just learned by doing. Well, and a lot of what you have covered in the DVDs that you've been filming this week is very technique-based. So. Do you find that there are one or two techniques that you return to again and again in your art or that you would refer to as your favorite? I definitely think that's true. I think there's probably two. One is just creating texture any way I can. I use a lot of gesso on my work and I use that as a basis for texture, but I'll create texture any way, shape, or form. And part of the way that I do that is the other technique I like, which is just adding dimension. Uh, in New York City, there's lots of stuff on the streets and I'm constantly there picking it up. So I'll pick up old metal pieces, anything with rust on it. If there's a little bits of paper, flotsam and jetsam, anything I find on the street, and I'll bring it back to the studio and use that as a basis for an art piece. And I might build a dimensional piece on a wood panel, or it might be more like an assemblage, but I use that a lot in my work, and it kind of determines where I go based on the pieces that I find. And on the flip side of that, is there any technique or a material that you're not particularly fond of or that you're inexperienced with and you find yourself avoiding? Well, there's definitely some things I haven't tried yet, but something that I've tried a little bit is fabric. Okay. I don't know how to sew. I've never used a sewing machine. I even have trouble threading a needle sometimes. So I avoid... I've heard that about you. <laughs> I'm sure you have. So I avoid fabric, but I use little bits and pieces in a lot of my art and in my books. So if it's this small, I can handle it. But give me a large piece and say make a quilt, I would have no Not clue so what to do. No, no. Well, where does that indicate that your art is going to go in the future? Is there anything that you're hoping to add or anything that you've experienced or seen lately that makes you go, hmm, yeah, I might want to I might want to try that. What, what can we expect to see from Seth Apter in the future? Well, I think that typically my work has been very small. A lot of my work is postcard size, sometimes mm -hmm. smaller, sometimes a little bit larger. 
And I really like the challenge of creating an entire little world in a small space. But there's been a lot of people out there that talk about the beauty of working big. And so lately, I've been working bigger. So for me, bigger is mostly 12 by 12. And actually, you can see some art on the wall here that, that is uh, actually large for me. And I have made one piece that's uh, three feet by three feet, which was really a stretch. But I've enjoyed working on the larger uh, canvas, and I think I'll continue that. Great. Shifting gears a little bit, I wanted to ask you about your book, The Pulse of Mixed Media. Um, it's a little bit different than the typical art book, or I guess better said, it's not really a how-to book. It seems a little bit more inspiring and a little bit more um, of the art community. Can you tell us a little bit more about the book? I think it does take a different approach than the, than the typical uh, how-to book. It's really not about a how-to at all. It, it was based on a project that I've been doing on my blog for about five years called The Pulse. The idea behind that was to try to take the pulse of the creative community. This is done through artist surveys, where I would ask different questions of the artists that they'd either answer with words or with photos of their art. And what really the book is, is an outgrowth of that, it takes it one step further. So it's, there's over 130 artists that are in the book, and the focus is on really the artist, the soul of the artist, the heart, the inspiration behind the artist. They answer questions either by creating art, so for example, one prompt was create a self-portrait without using your image. One question was how do you show passion in your art? And then they also answer questions that are more verbal. Questions like, have you ever lost a friendship over art? Or could you share a secret with us that you've never shared with the artist community? Again, it's not about the art per se, it's much more about the artist and trying to get underneath them, see what makes them tick, what inspires them, what obstacles they face, kind of what fuels their art. What did you find to be the most challenging part of writing that book? Because that, that's a lot of work and a lot of authors that you're working with. Yeah, that in and of itself was one of the most challenging pieces. There are 130 artists. They've all answered at least 10 questions. They've created art. And because of that, there was just a ton of information coming into me, um, usually not in one single email. So I, I know you have that experience. <laughs> yep. So organizing all that information was definitely uh, quite an effort, uh, quite an effort. The, the other aspect was, uh, that was difficult and challenging was the fact that I was on the other side of the fence Usually as an artist, I am putting my work out there, I'm um, sending it in for publication or for uh, uh, to being ch chosen for a, an exhibition, and I'm usually the person who's waiting to hear, am I accepted or am I rejected? And in the case of this book, I was on the other side, where I got a lot of people sending me really wonderful art and wonderful answers, but I could not use it all because I had only 144 pages to fill. And so I had to actually say yes and no to people, and I, I found that really difficult. Yeah, that hurts. That's not an easy decision to make. No, so. no, not at Don't all. Don't envy you on that. I'm fascinated by the aspect of the artist survey and asking people to share um, different parts of their artistic lives with a broader audience. Are there any particular questions from that survey for which the results surprised you? Um, actually, I think the biggest surprise was the general response. When we first put this book together, I, I was thinking that I might have to ask some of these questions anonymously because I wasn't sure if I'd get real good answers that were honest. And so, for example, the question, can you share a secret that you've never shared before? I didn't know what to expect. And the biggest surprise was just the level of honesty and, and vulnerability that all these artists showed. Usually as artists, we show these kinds of personal things through the creation of our art. That's where it all goes. But people were just so direct and so open they gave me answers that just sort of shocked me, surprised me, um, actually really brought me to tears, no kidding, sometimes, yeah. because they were just so intense. In my experience, I am always surprised by the level with which some of the artists I've worked with are willing to share that type of information, mm -hmm. both through their, through their art generally, but just in general, it's pretty brave. Absolutely, yeah. I guess as artists, we're used to putting ourselves out there on one level every time we show an art piece to the public. So in a manner of speaking, it's maybe less of a step right. than I would have thought to then be more open You've already on a done this level. one step, so just take the greater leap of yeah. faith and really put it out there. Just jump right in. Yeah, yeah. definitely. 
Um, I also wanted to ask you to tell us a little bit more about the DVDs you've been working on this week. So what can you share with us about those? Well, they're both project driven in the sense that at the end of the DVD, you'll be able to, if you follow along, you'll be able to have a, a, a finished work of art, and actually in some cases, several finished works of art. But really the focus is on technique. And what I'm doing is trying to introduce two different ways, some techniques that you can use to create this artwork to create collage, to bring your collage together, to create texture in your art, and a lot of low-tech um, solutions to problems that, as artists, we always face. How, how can you bring something in that's not traditional art and make it your own? You're definitely an advocate for the, um, the low-tech. Do you want to tell us just quickly what a couple of your favorite low-tech tools might be? Sure, 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 because I, I love them. I love um, the corrugated cardboard, use, using that to create texture. I like to take uh, items like uh, post-its or whiteout tape that you might find in the office supply store and use those in an artful way. Um, things that might be lying around the house, whether it's a toilet paper roll, whether it's a jar, cover um, you can use to create circles. Things that as a mixed media artist kind of come naturally to all mm -hmm. of us, but things that typically would not be thought of um, as art. And I know that you are very busy this year with a lot of different book and DVD related events and other events and workshops, etc. If um, some of our viewers were interested in finding out more about you and your art, how might they do so? Well, the best place to stop is at my blog. It's thealteredpage.blogspot.com. And from there, you'll see a few things. You'll see links to the other sites that I'm involved with, my Facebook site, my Twitter site. And I'm also a contributor to createmixedmedia.com. <laughs> As you know, I have a series of articles mm -hmm. that I've written, and I will continue to write for that great portal for mixed media and other artists. And then in addition, you can see uh, where I happen to be uh, moving around the country whether it's for a workshop or, or anything else, the lists are on my blog. Great. So what we have to look forward to right now from Seth is his book, The Pulse of Mixed Media, and the two DVDs that he's in town working on this week. You will be able to find any of those items at either your favorite online retailer, favorite bookstore, art supply store, craft store, or of course at northlightshop.com. Seth, we just wanted to thank you once again for taking the time to spend with us today and for taking the time for this little conversation. Thank you, Christy. It's been amazing. Great experience. Thank you. Thank you.